Today on Real Life, Mark Lowry and Andrew Greer are back with their dinner conversations. The duo opens up about their new show centered around their mealtime musings. Plus, how do you cleave to your spouse and still honor your parents? You'll want to hear the sisters' opinions. And on Real Life Coaching, making the Keto Zone diet work for you. Dr. Colbert coaches us into a healthy life. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit empowers you. And the Bible it is your guide to abundant life. <laughs> That's right. I am. Are Jay you here? An- <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not Don Black. He's no. off today. I'm That's Jay right. Anthony Gilbert along with his lovely sidekick. Terry. Hi, everyone. And, and I'm the cheerleader, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo. It is the new year, 2018. Yes. We're 10 days into the new year and I tell you what God is already on the move and I'm sure some of y'all got new year's resolutions and things going on so how are we doing with those you guys got any weight loss is in everybody's (laughs) new year's resolution (laughs) especially after Christmas and all those darn Christmas cookies that are like amazing it's like the death of me well and I still can't get why Pittsburgh is like the cookie capital of the world it seems like I don't know I'm just making that up it just seems like there's cookies at weddings there's cookies everywhere you know it's a big deal here an Italian cookie yeah well, when I got married, my, they, it was this big thing. I got married in Pittsburgh. I'm from New York. My wife's like, we got to have Christmas. We got to have, or not Christmas, we got to have wedding cookies. I was like, what's the big deal about wedding cookies? Uh-huh. So, oh, yeah. It's okay, a that's a Pittsburgh thing. I think so, because when we that. lived, you know, in different parts of the country, when we've gone to weddings, there were no cookies. Oh. You know, there was just like a groom's cake and a, and a wedding cake, but yeah. no cookies. But here. It's really fun being a pastor, and you get to do all the weddings, and you're like, ooh, where's the cookie table? <laughs> get to that Will you do table. my wedding? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are you having a cookie table? <laughs> you know what? Uh, yeah, go oh, ahead. no, with, with, back to the weight loss yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. you know. I always wish that when I would go to the gym and I would do my exercising, that in that time I would lose all the weight that I did in that exercising. Amen. Wouldn't you think that would be great? Hallelujah. Wouldn't that, that would be, be an nice. awesome That'd thing? That'd be awesome. It, that would be. it would just melt away. Everything I exercise, every step I walk on that treadmill or I swim, there goes that calorie, so that pound. Somebody gave me a, it's called the happiness planner for uh, Christmas. And oh. it's the, it's like this thick, you know, yearly, but it has all of these pages of questions that assess your last year. What's your happiness level? Do you like where you're at? Where do you yeah. see yourself going? And all, I mean, it's like pages and pages of questions that you're like, wow. Like it, it's really causing me to reflect on what are my, where am I, what's my actual, and you know, mm-hmm. where do I want to go, and what, and, and I don't know, it's, it's kind of interesting. That is. It's kind of good provoking. to see, like, yes. where am I really at, and where do I really want to go this year? Oh, I my. think every person should mm-hmm. really look back to spring ahead. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't done that, coming into this new year, you should have a vision for 2018. Right. Have a vision of where you want to go and what you want to accomplish, and you know, one of the good things is that Coaching is going to be coming up in just a little bit here, and that's Mm -hmm. going to also help you put yourself in the right direction, get yourself Mm -hmm. focused so you can have practical handles in order to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. And what's great is today on Coaching, Dr. Don Colbert's wife, Mary, is going to be sharing her story Mm -hmm. about getting into the zone. The okay. keto zone diet. It's yes. going to be great. My Good. wife and I are on it. Oh, oh really? We're, right. We're trying it too. Diet. We're trying it out too. So we'll we'll see. So this is also mm-hmm. a, t- a time where a lot of people are doing the 21 day fast yes. at the That's beginning right. of the year. Mm-hmm. So man, it, can, it fasting really puts you in a place where it's you're kind of killing your stomach, killing your flesh, saying quiet down a little bit right. and let me hear from the Spirit of God's That's, voice. I would like so, to think January, the whole month would yes, be like that, yes. wouldn't you? Yeah. I would <laughs> like some quietness, That's to be right. honest. I mean, uh, After vacations and, and cancellations of school, because it's so cold here. It it's is. like two hour delay, so 
I, I could use a little quietness. <laughs> Wasn't it good to be able to, you know, come through the holidays, you come through all that food eating, and then you hop on a fast. Yes. Like you said, you put yeah. your flesh aside and you can really, you know, get, you can shed some pounds while you're fasting and get spiritual all at the same time. That's the good thing about it. <laughs> and how it. about we have Andrew Greer and Mark yeah. Lowry here today. That's right. I mean, what a fantastic day to be watching real awesome, life. Awesome, awesome, That awesome. is, and guess what? And we also have today sister to sister, and they always answer, or they, not answer, but they discuss some really interesting questions, right, Amy? <laughs> right. Well, today's question is, how do you honor your parents mm -hmm. and cleave to your spouse? Let's hear what the sisters have to say on Sister to Sister. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We are so glad that you tuned in to meet us. We are five determined, beautiful, awesome <laughs> women of God. And we come to the questions and problems of the world from a biblical perspective. And this one is from a personal heart perspective. Listen to this. All right, girls, the Bible tells us to leave our parents and cleave to our spouse. How do you do that and still honor your mom and dad? And was it a hard transition for you? And when I read this question, I said, no, it wasn't because I was 19. And as George was carrying me out, I was saying, where's my mom? So no, 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 no. It's, I was still cleaving, but I've learned 44 years later, we're okay. <laughs> what do you girls think? I always want to hear the adjectives you use to describe us at the beginning. I'm always yeah. like waiting for my daily dose of <laughs> self-esteem boost from, <laughs> from Kathy. You got it. Um, but no, I, I got married young too, and I found the transition extremely difficult. I grew up in a town where all of my relatives lived within a few block radius of oh. everyone. Um, we're from the Pittsburgh area. I mean, it just, it was a very hard transition. We went to a church where both sets of our parents attended. Okay. You know, it was just a very, very difficult transition, um, especially because I was the oldest, so I didn't have a sibling that went before oh, me, yeah. and um, and it was it was detrimental to our marriage. I want to say like the first couple years of our marriage were the hardest years of marriage for us, and I think it was because of that whole that that pulling, that leaving mm. and cleaving. We ended up moving to Connecticut, and it was the best thing for our marriage. It was devastating to my family. It was devastating to me. I, I couldn't imagine living far away, but it was the absolute best thing for our marriage. We joined a church. We became, you know, our own family unit. unit. We, you know, got involved in that church without, you know, being the son and daughter that's of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And it was just so good for our marriage. I know that, that that's not always the path for everyone, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord had us move out of state far away so that we could do that. And now we're back in Pittsburgh yeah, and, and the Lord has just made it that we have our family unit and we, it's just so much better. And that's touching oh, that's someone, great. your answer. Thank you, good and job. And I never left my town. <laughs> <laughs> or your mother. Yeah, my Aww. mom's still here. She's always here. No. I, you know, reflecting on it, it says cleave to your spouse. And what I, what I could remember with my parents is they respected my spouse. Mm -hmm. So if I have any words of wisdom to give, mm -hmm. and it's not mine, mm -hmm. it's my parents, really, they respected my husband. They respected our relationship with one another. I mean, they were there for us, but they respected that. They didn't talk badly about my husband or when they saw things, they kept their mouth quiet so we could work it out. See, that's what so, that generation does. Yeah, so, Our generation, not so, so much. So show some respect if you're a parent. And so I'm trying to learn that. That's right, that's right. Show respect for my children's friends and so on and people that they get involved with and uh, let them cleave, let them. So I, that issue of respect goes back to actually the parents' responsibility. Yeah, I, like I agree. That. My mom did the exact same thing, Roxy. I was all mad, newly wed, and I called my mom to say, Buck did this and Buck did that. <laughs> and she said, Amy, you go right back to your husband and you guys work it out. Love you. Yep. <laughs> and made me, she one. made me leave and cleave. Whether <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, but... Okay, well, thank you. So, you know, and to honor your parents is to make a big deal of them. You yes, can honor your parents yes. and make a big deal of them while you're cleaving Amen. to your husband and good spouse. One. Good right. one. I can't right. wait to hear you leave and cleave. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> you know, actually, my story lines up with the, my two sisters, um, and I definitely agree with what Corey was saying. I just think that 
the whole, the, to, in order for me to cleave, I don't have to dishonor my right. parents. Right. Although I will tell you, I did a horrible job in the beginning of the marriage. Um, oh, I am TV, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, my husband used to use it. Um, I, I, I did a lot of growing in the beginning stages. And uh, I come from a close-knit family and uh, my expectations were just unrealistic. And, you know, uh, but because I had good parents and because they had the wisdom that they did, they helped me to leave and cleave. Now, what did I do with that wisdom? I still called daddy when I oh, needed yeah. something. Yeah. I still yeah. called uncle this one when I needed something. <laughs> and I think my husband, just the background that he came from, for some reason, it really wasn't that big of an issue for us. Right, so you yeah. don't have any trouble with leaving? I don't know that I ever left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what we're, we're saying. You moved away, which was really good. It sounded like God did that. And you moved away, away. which caused you and Buck to just be come closer and your mission mm. together yeah. was right. so great. And right now I'm longing for my parents so oh, yes. deeply. Yes. You know, yes, 20 can. years we've been in Pittsburgh and I long to, you know, go to lunch with them any day I want. And it's it's a battle. That yes. makes me cry because mm -hmm. I long for my mom and dad who are in heaven. So yeah. when when you're ready to leave and cleave, hold on one side on the cleave right. and go to Texas, oh, Pennsylvania, oh, Connecticut, oh, right. wherever on the oh, other right. hand. And we're happy that you tuned in to hear our opinions and our ideas and our answers on this leave it and cleave it. We got all kinds of good stuff for you. So find us next time on Sister to Sister. What a great topic of discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think about leaving Cleveland. Actually, the leaving Cleveland actually speaks to the man yeah. okay. uh, more than it just does mm -hmm. to the woman because mm -hmm. both of the man is the only one that actually is under a covering mm -hmm. and the woman is under a covering and he now becomes a covering. covering. Okay. So what happened is God says, I'm not gonna leave the woman out there. She mm -hmm. comes now and the man becomes her covering, which is why ladies, you always gotta pick a good man right. because mm -hmm. he's going to be the covering over your life. And that's right. why a woman usually takes on the man's mm -hmm. name. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just wanted to throw that in there yeah, sure, in yeah. regards to that okay. piece, so. Now that might be a good question for the hard question. That would be good. That's what do you think about that? You know, so. Like mama's boys yeah. that are yeah. like 45 mm -hmm. and you know. <laughs> Well, you know, for ourselves, like uh, Dawn and I got married and we got married in another state. We had lived in another state, so we never really had to deal with the uh, mm -hmm. leaving and the cleaving because we just had each other. So, but I'm sure for some of you that it has been a, it has been an ongoing challenge. Sure. Yeah. You know? I mean, my mom said, don't you call me and talk about my son-in-law. I mean, so she stopped it right there, even because mm -hmm. how many girls call their parents and right. just complain about their husbands? Now, I call my mother-in-law, <laughs> and she's all ears, and that's a safe place. And she's like, I'm praying for you. I know that guy. And there's a, I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. You know, I know you want to get to know us better. <laughs> And we want to get to know you better. That is why we have a newsletter. We can't wait to get into your hands. I was diagnosed with boring mail. I just hated getting my mail because all I got were bills. I felt so bored and disconnected. One day, I called for the Cornerstone Real Life Newsletter. Now, I can't wait to go to my mailbox. Side effects of the Real Life Newsletter may include a closer walk with God, daily encouragement, information about Cornerstone Network special guests, and more. Call today for the Real Life Newsletter. It'll change your life. Lowry and Andrew Greer join us to help turn the light on one conversation at a time with their new series, Dinner Conversations, right here on Cornerstone. Woohoo! Mark, 
Andrew, yes. welcome yes. to Real Life. Yes. 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 Your television family now. Yes. yes, so exciting. I never thought I'd have a TV show. <laughs> there it's you go. With you. <laughs> We've only known each other a year. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah you're, you're we met wow. when he interviewed me for CCM magazine. Yes. Yeah. So interview. our first yeah. meeting was like this. Okay, now yeah. wait. Oh, cool. For some of us people watching, they may not know what CCM magazine is. Can sure. you tell us yeah, what it is? Yeah, CCM magazine is a great magazine. It's been around like 30, 40 mm -hmm. years now uh, that pretty much celebrates Christian music. Okay. So okay. it features all kinds of people, has through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, all the way up till today. So a real piece of history in gospel music. Okay. And so you were interviewing he a historian was, yeah, here? Yeah, he was actually the, <laughs> a, legacy. A, a historic figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> it's so funny how you feel, I feel like I'm just getting started still. And now I'm yeah. the old guy. You're, Which, yeah. when, when we put this thing together, <laughs> okay. I wanted to have a, a young perspective. Right. A, a millennial, barely millennial yeah. perspective. Yeah. But, yeah. but a younger perspective on the conversations we're right. having. Mm -hmm. And we've had some incredible conversations. I don't want to bring artists in like Sandy Patty and Mark Schultz and, and just talk about their careers, mm -hmm. right. what, mm -hmm. stuff we already know. Yeah. Right. I want to know how Sandy Patty blended a family. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, people, mm -hmm. stuff that people really. Right can learn and, and benefit from. And Mark Schultz, what it was like being adopted and being an adoptive father and then. Mm, yeah. uh, when we had Point of Grace on and talking yeah. about the Bible, how do we as New Testament Christians look you know, into the Old Testament, to God of the Old Testament, sometime where we feel like we can't reconcile Jesus and God. And I had no idea until I was on a plane ride with Shelly, one of the girls coming back from a show that she'd had all this incredible experience uh, just recently going through the Bible, reading oh, it chronologically, okay. and it completely opened her eyes to how she filters everything in life. So, okay. you know, to talk about that. Now, so is the show just about conversations or do you have music in it as well? We have some music here okay. and there. Uh, it's evolving, you know, we, uh -huh. when we started this, we didn't, it's still evolving. We don't know what it will become. <laughs> And each show could be a little different. We did a couple of Christmas specials mm -hmm. with yeah. a lot of music. With okay. a very loud Christmas jacket on. <laughs> with a That's very right. loud <laughs> Christmas jacket. It had yeah, the little sequins. Or... I got that for $100 <laughs> off the internet. Which guy wears sequins? <laughs> that, that's Pan that's the your man. Pan the camera. <laughs> so what do you mean, like, turn the light bulb on in conversations? Turn. Like, a light bulb? What, what does that mean? Well, that came, I, mm -hmm. I, I learned that years ago when I was taking a songwriting class. Mm -hmm. I heard a guy named Ron Harris, who wrote a lot of songs for mm -hmm. Evie back yeah. in the day. He said, a song should never preach, it should turn the light on. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was too young to even really get that. Mm -hmm. But as I've grown yeah. and, and, and you know, traveled and performed, all, I, I, I've learned that a, a great song, a great mm -hmm. sermon, a great anything should turn the light on. Wow. You know, if you, it's, you remember when Jesus said to the religious folks of his day, he said, you've taken God's law which should be a banquet for all to come and feast on. And you've bundled it into rules and you've That's loaded true. them down like pack animals and you won't lift a finger to help them up when they fall <laughs> beneath the load. Yeah. Well, he chewed them out royally. He right. did, that that's right. And, and the thing is, we want to, uh, I really forgot where I was going well, with all like that. music, I think yeah. good conversation See, that's, does you need turn a young the light on. See, you were going <laughs> to oh, turn the light on. Yeah, yes. yeah turn, turn the light on. Turn the light on. Yeah. And, and there it is. Ping pong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so. Yeah, good it, conversation does that. And if you, mm -hmm. if you set yeah. the banquet, like Jesus said, and yes. turn the light on, everybody can see what they need to get. Right. Yeah. Every, you, you can hear the same sermon and everybody gets something different Absolutely. from it. Absolutely. Yeah. Because so you're, that's you right. set the God, table right? I mean, mm -hmm. and you're not chewing work. the food for them. Mm -hmm. right. A lot right. of pastors mm -hmm. want to chew the food for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They want to, you know, they chew the food yes, and then they want right. you to leave the light out and just right. digest it. That's right. And yes. you're just, and we all become babies yeah. and we don't really grow up yeah. at all in our faith. Mm -hmm. You know, right. exactly. I, I do have a question for you okay. though. Okay. <laughs> now you've been in the music, Christian music for a while, yeah, maybe well, a few years. Whole life. Whole ages life. and ages. Ages and ages. Okay. Since I was so four. I understand that you have the, you could, you were the longest member of the Gaither Vocal, vocal trio. band. I didn't know wow. That. Twice. Twice. <laughs> was they, yes. I was with them 13 years, uh -huh. and that's a long time for me. I have uh -huh. ADD. I used to have ADHD, but when I turned 50, I dropped the H because okay. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I, okay. I, it's, it's it's 13 years. I didn't go to school that long, hardly. I was yeah. yeah that's that's a long time. That and is so a long I, time I made for it, you. When I when I called Bill and told him I was leaving, I was all nervous because oh, we had really created yes. a yes. thing, me and right. him. Yeah. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I was nervous that he'd be disappointed. But then I remembered Sandy had left him, Carmen had left him, yeah. Amy Grant, bigger Gloria. people, <laughs> bigger, no, not Gloria. A bigger oh, yeah, not Gloria. Bigger people than me have left him, so that helped. Okay. So I, and I, when I called him, I said, I need to have a meeting. And he, I've never asked for a meeting. He said, are you going to leave? And I said, well, if you make me tell you on the phone, yes. He said, we don't need a meeting. He said, you, he, this is what he said. You said you would stay for three years. You stayed for 13. Aww. Let's thank God for 13 wonderful Aww. years. That's so you know what's so smart about that man? Mm -hmm. He blesses you when you come and he blesses you when you leave. Oh, that is Which is and not controlling. You know? is not that, control is, that is and, really and good. You, and all you're doing when you do that, you're planting blessings in That's your awesome. garden. Oh, yes. They grow up for you. Mm -hmm. Bless them when they come, bless them when they leave. And we never had a contract. Really? No. Wow. Never had a contract. And he, he, I, same way with anybody I work with. If you don't want to be here, mm -hmm. yeah. there's the door. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want you here if you don't want to be here. Right. And yes. the contract just makes people who don't want to be there be there. That's yeah. right. And But then through all of it, your passion has been to sing for the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, isn't that an awesome, well, what's not awesome to love gift? About him? Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why I wrote that song. What's not to love about Jesus? Mm -hmm. I mean, and the more I get to know Him, the nicer He becomes. <laughs> you know, He's a lot nicer than they told us. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, He is crazy about us. Mm -hmm. He would rather die than live without us. Mm -hmm. And anybody who loves you enough to die for you is on your side. Yes. Mm -hmm. He is right. on mm -hmm. your team. Yes. And that's what I'm learning about him. And I'm not, I don't chase after him because I'm spiritual. I'm not. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the most fascinating thing I've ever discovered is God. Mm -hmm. And every time I turn a corner, he's left more diamonds there for me to pick up and explore mm -hmm. how good he is. Mm -hmm. And this journey is just one diamond after another. Mm -hmm. When you follow him, and it'll lead, lead you. And sometimes you take little side roads, you know, you don't right. want, you shouldn't be on, but he'll be waiting on you when you come back, you know. Oh. I love that about I'm him. I'm thinking about how many people think that God is mean, that he's angry, mm -hmm. that well, he's why do mad you think at them. That? Think that. It goes back because to Because TV preachers babies. have screamed at them for <laughs> years. <laughs> and I, I want to tell you, it's like this if you yeah. had a child and you said, Mark, go out in the yard and tell my child to come in the house, time to eat. And I went out in the yard and said, I'm telling you, your mother said, come in and eat. Well, the message is correct, mm -hmm. but the tone yes. right. is right. different. That's right. Our Father said, come unto me all who are weary. Right. Listen to the mm -hmm. words of Jesus. He right. says, are you tired, yep. worn yeah. out, burned out on religion? religion. Mm -hmm. Come to me. Yep. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. life. I'll Absolutely. show you how to take a real rest. Mm -hmm. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. I love this line. Learn the unforced <laughs> rhythms of grace. Don't wow. you love that? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. like That's our in theme the message scripture. Bible. Yes. You need yeah. to get a yeah. message Bible. Yes. Learn the unforced us. rhythms of mm -hmm. grace. And yes. then he goes on to say, I'll not put anything too heavy, heavy or, or ill-fitting Ill on, on you. you. Keep company Come with me you. and you'll learn to live freely, freely and, and lightly. lightly. Wow, no why you guys do really good. Is, I'm impressed. But isn't that, now wait, tell us where that scripture's found. It's a I don't message. know. Okay. It's in the Bible. Okay. It's, Guess I, what? I you better where, look I'm, it I'm, up. I've got a lot of them memorized. I don't know where they are. I think it's Matthew, Matthew 9. Yeah. yeah okay. I think Matthew. Or 11. Someone told us when they learned the tone of voice that yeah. God was speaking to us through scripture. Scripture, when they learned the tone of voice yes. of God, yes. they right. learned that he was so much kinder. And that he's know, loving, he yes. absolutely. He's loving, giving, gracious, kind father. You've got absolutely. to learn to look at the Bible through the lens of Jesus, mm -hmm. especially the Old Testament. Yeah. Look at it through the lens of Jesus. That's right. Because right. the revelation of God is like a crescendo. Mm. Moses learned there's one God, but we learn it mm. apexes, climaxes mm -hmm. in Jesus. We yes. learn the true mm. picture of God. Amen. Okay, Dinner Conversations, <laughs> their brand new show is airing Wednesdays at 10 p.m. right here on Cornerstone, Saturdays at 3 and Tuesdays at 2.30. And guess what? We get to hear Mark Lowry sing right now. What's not to love? Yeah, Isn't that what we're talking that's about? An awesome What's song. not to love? Thank you guys for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for, for sharing. Us. And I'm so glad we get to host your show right here on Cornerstone. Let's go to Mark.
What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. Well, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. What's not to love? What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. Well, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. What's not to love? What's not to love? About a peace that keeps me through the night. What's not to about those nail-scarred hands that hold me tight What's not to love? About the healing touch that gave me sight And since I've learned to trust him Everything's gonna be alright What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased What's not to love? What's not to love? About a What's not to love? What's not to love? He gives new mercy every morning like rain. What's not to love? I walk in favor, I just can't explain. What's not to love? I've been forgiven, love broke every chain. And look who's been adopted. And the king gave me his name. What's not to love? What's not to love? The Savior took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. Well, I'd like to know. I'd like to know. What's not to love? What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love about Jesus? What's not to love? Well, can I get a witness? I got to testify. Some people call me crazy, but I'm the apple of his eye. What's not to love? What's not to love about Jesus? Oh, what's not how to love? I love Jesus. What's not to love about Jesus? Yeah. What's not to love? Can you hear the music? Can you feel the beats? The angels must be dancing. Cause he's singing over me What's not to love What's not to love About Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus What's not to love About Jesus What's not to love He's just wild about me I always make him smile My picture's in his wallet Cause I'm his favorite child What's not to love What's not to love a he took my place. What's not to love? What's not to love? My sins have been erased. What's not to love? What's not to love? About amazing grace. Somebody tell me. I'd like to know. What's not to love? Worshippers put their lives on the line to save others during a church attack in Cairo, Egypt. Nine people lost their lives when a gunman opened fire in the church. We're told churchgoers slammed the sanctuary's iron gate so the gunman couldn't take any more lives. Witnesses say a 53-year-old man saved dozens of lives when he jumped on the shooter while he was loading a gun. Worshippers say the man stepped in and likely stopped the shooting from becoming an even greater tragedy. Servers working at a Waffle House in Ohio received quite a blessing from a church. 75 members of Grand Lake United Methodist pitched in more than $3,500 to lead the restaurant staff a generous tip. The parishioners' generosity was part of a giving outreach at the church. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. Hey Cornerstone family, great news. Now you can access all your favorite Cornerstone moments right from your iPhone or iPad. Once you download the brand new Cornerstone television app, you can watch our live programming on demand, including special original shows and movies. You can also use the app to call for prayer. At CTVN, you are our family. And now, thanks to the Cornerstone television app, we're just a 
click away. You may have heard people on Cornerstone mention Roku, but what is it? Roku is a device that connects to your television and streams thousands of channels from all around the world, including CTVN. You can watch your favorite Cornerstone shows 24-7 anywhere from around the world. Roku is helping us take the gospel as far as possible and as quickly as possible. For more information on how to connect with us on Roku, go to ctvn.org slash Roku. In real life coaching, our goal is to help you become the best you possible and to win in life God's way. Did you know that you can be in the keto zone and still go out to eat? What about even treating yourself? Dr. Don Colbert and his wife, Mary, explain how to be realistic with weight loss in the keto zone diet. It's time to get into the zone. Let's get started with real life coaching. Don, I've, ex I've really got, got a lot out of listening to you explain the ketone diet. It, it's, uh, it's revolutionary, and I'm so w w welcoming your wife, Mary, your beautiful mm -hmm. wife, Mary, here. What a treat to have you with <laughs> us. Thank you. Thank we you. get two for the price of one. Uh, but in this regard, Mary, you engaged in this program. Actually, I did, Don. And, you know, the one thing I would say to the, uh, the, the listener is, to everything there is a season. And sometimes it's just not the right season for people. And people have to understand, you can't force someone to want to do this or feel like to do it. It has got to be the season of where they themselves have the aha moment. Mm -hmm. And Don many times will see the aha moment with patients because they're laying on their back in ICU and they almost had a heart attack. And then they're like, okay, doc, I'm ready to do whatever you say. But that's their aha moment. Or it's seeing yourself on television, <laughs> which packs additional weight onto you anyway, which was my aha moment. And uh, I was on a television program uh, not too long ago, and I looked and I went, that's not me. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, how did that happen? And uh, it was horrifying for me personally. Um, and I realized that I had put everything ahead of me. And I had, I have a lot on my plate. I have a lot going on. I have a lot that I care about. And I just said, you know, Mary, you're going to have to take a back seat for a while. And a lot of women identify with me on sure. this, especially if they're, they've got little ones and children and they're, if they're working jobs and taking care of little kids, it's like, excuse me, I don't even want to think about food. Okay, that's like, I don't have time mm -hmm. for that. I've got too many other mm -hmm. uh, pressures that you find to be more important until you have an aha moment. And when you have the aha moment, this is the program. This really is the program to do. It's easy, it's, the results are astounding. I've done every diet known to man. <laughs> I don't care what it is, I've done every woman, you know, they play around with everything. And I am amazed um, at where you're not hungry, you have energy. Um, your mental clarity, uh, what happens with the mind in this program, I think is something worth really emphasizing. It's just amazing. I just feel like I'm firing on all cylinders now, where before you're kind of tired and, you know, you're just really getting through. Um, the feeling of feeling good becomes addictive. So, Mary, so you had this aha moment. You saw yourself on TV. Scares the daylights out of all of us. <laughs> but then what did you go to Don? Did you go to Don and say, Don, how did, it, how did you make the connection? With, well, with, I, with, this, with this program? Well, you know, he has uh, been doing... A, a type of keto uh, 
diet with his patients, especially cancer patients, through the years. So I'm familiar with hearing some of the, but I also heard how people talked about how difficult it was. I mean, we heard cancer patients say, I'd rather die than do this diet, oh, <laughs> which is, you know, if this is living, forget it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so Don modified it. He was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is not gonna work. I, I need to work something out. And I really feel the Lord, I really do. I feel it was inspired from heaven in a lot of the revelations and work that he did because um, it was just very exciting. So when he was, the, the book had just come out and my son Kyle, who's our CEO, was talking about all these testimonies on the thing going, wow, I lost five pounds this week. Oh my gosh, this, you know, and all. And I'm hearing the activity and then I see myself on TV and I just went, okay, <laughs> I'm doing it too. <laughs> well, I'm on what, board too, what, what do I do? What did you say or how did you think when Mary said, I'm ready to do it? I was ecstatic. I said, listen, I'll be your coach. I said, we'll go, when we go out to eat, we'll take pictures of the food and you can, sh you can show your Facebook friends what you're eating. And she was all excited because literally she would eat a wonderful dinner with lots of veggies, salad with extra virgin olive oil. The meat that she would eat would be, you know, a good lean piece of meat or a fatty piece of meat that was cooked chicken well. Chicken parmesan. I mean, chicken parmesan covered with melted parmesan cheese, you know, and then... Uh, but then lots of broccoli, lots of salads broccoli too. Broccoli or asparagus. And again, what know. we did is we put together the right fuel mixture that literally gave her five senses what they needed. Mm -hmm. It raised her fats. It increased her ketones. It put her into a state of nutritional ketones where literally it turned off her appetite. Mm -hmm. Now, for most people, if they follow the program, they'll lose usually one to two pounds a week. Now, if you, if you follow our Accelerate program, you can lose more and use the Keto Zone coffee in the morning and then a good healthy lunch and dinner and then exercise too. But then what I, what I tell people is, if you lose just one pound a week, that's 52 pounds a year. But I also have to tell you, yeah. do not weigh but once a week That's when true. you're doing this. What's it mean? You only want to weigh once a week and on the consistently on the scale. The, right. on the scale. Okay. Right. You, you only want to do that. And measure and do it the waist same time. once a month. That's what we do our patients because for our patients because they'll be. It's kind of like when you lose weight. It's kind of like walking down a staircase. You go down one stair, then you plateau. Then one step plateau, one step. So if, if what happens if a person doesn't lose a pound or gains a pound mm -hmm. because of fluid weight, mm -hmm. uh, then they get discouraged and they say, what the heck, I forget it. Forget the program. So that's why I tell people, make a commitment. It's so important. Get your aha moment. It may be a disease, because but make that, that commitment. That's exactly what happened to me. The first week, it seemed like the weight went, I'm like, oh, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> right. And then the second week, it did not move. The scale did not move. And so she I got was, discouraged. She said, I'm ready to quit uh, this thing. No, no, I did not. That's, <laughs> I did not say that. I came to him and I was discouraged. I go, Don, wait a minute. Something is wrong. I have not cheated. I give you my word. Uh, I'm, you know, I was going to follow this to the T. Yeah. And, and the scale didn't move. So, and he says, okay, let's review. And he goes, oh, well, first Calories. of all, Mary, you're eating like 3,000 calories. calories and I go, well, you never said anything about calories. <laughs> so I'm thinking- She's eating as just, much as me. <laughs> I thinking, said, Mary, I'm trying to maintain my weight. <laughs> I was thinking, well, if it's low in carb, I can have all I want, you know? <laughs> so it was like, I had to educate myself to the reality that it doesn't, just because it may be low, low in carb, it doesn't mean you can eat the whole block of cheese, you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can have some cheese, right. you just can't eat the whole block, you know, so I had to have some paradigm shifts in my mind. And the, the word that you use is key, ketosis, right? Right. It's, well, right. Ketosis is a nutritional state. It's, it's when you're in the keto zone. You enter into a state of nutritional ketosis or keto adaptation, where your body shifts from being a sugar-burning body to a fat-burning body or a sugar-burning machine like a gas fueled engine versus diesel fuel, we shift you from sugar burning to fat burning. And that's a major shift. When you enter into that and those ketone levels rise, it literally shuts down the appetite hormones. I have to tell you, the thing that really kind of freaked me out, because I've been a dieter and a professional dieter like everyone else, the, uh, my coffee in the morning is my big thing. You know, I love my coffee. 
And when he brought out the heavy whipping cream and mm -hmm. said, here, you can put this in it, I was like, what? Heavy whipping cream in my coffee? Organic, are, though. It was organic. Are you trying to blow me up? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I thought, this can't be real. He goes, just trust me, Mary. I want you to put it in your coffee, and you're going to put this MCT, With some MCT oil powder, oil powder just a in your coffee. Just it, a tablespoon. You know? Just put it in there. Just trust me on this. And I'm like, okay. What's so cool about that is my appetite just turned off. I wasn't craving anything. I wasn't hungry for anything. And that was a real eye opener to me. And he goes, Mary, that's because you have always thought low fat, no fat. He goes, I'm, I'm trying to get through to you. If you eat the healthy fat, your appetite hormones turn off. Mm. And when you think low fat, no fat, you're going to be hungry all the time. Every four hours, and three to four hours. That, that I have to tell you, folks, it is a shift in thinking, but boy, does it work. Well, Mary, was sugar a big part of your life before? <laughs> that was her comforter. Was it? A lot of people, it is. Um, you know. Tell the truth. No, I, I am. I, I am telling the truth. I don't, you know, when I think of sugar, I think of cookies pies and snack, you know, snack, sugary kinds of mm -hmm. things. So no, I, 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 I would do it every now and then, but it wasn't something I ever craved. Mm -hmm. But when you begin to look at things that convert to sugar, that are high in carbs, like a croissant. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh. now I like those croissants from Starbucks. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to go and, and get- the, And the chocolate mocha And the coffee chocolate mocha. With, with three squirts of chocolate Yeah, in there. right. So, high sugar. <laughs> there you go. So even though we know that sugar, I wouldn't have thought of it like sugar. It wasn't a cookie. Right. It wasn't a cookie. And, yeah. and, and Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. What about that? What about diet products? Real interesting. Here's what diet products do. Diet products, when you drink sugar, a sugar beverage, a Coke, you get that burst of that burst of sugar, and then you get a release of dopamine, which is the pleasure reward neurotransmitter of the brain. It's the same uh, neurotransmitter that's increased when you uh, take cocaine or uh, methamphetamine. You get that tremendous dopamine high, mm -hmm. that tremendous bliss, pleasure, euphoria. And then it's, it's then followed by sugar to the brain. And the brain is rewarded and it shuts down the appetite hormones. Now when you have artificial sweeteners, like you know NutraSweet and Splenda and products like that, or Sweet and Love, you get that same dopamine surge. So you get that bliss, that euphoria, that good comfort feeling, like a Holy Ghost comforter substitute. Mm -hmm. But what happens, you do not get the calories, which the brain needs to shut down the appetite hormones. So because you do not get those calories, follow, the dopamine followed by the calories, all of a sudden your appetite increases. It scrambles your appetite hormones and you're gonna be reaching for food and craving more food or more diet sodas. But I can tell you from just my own personal experience, um, I drink diet Pepsi and I don't drink a lot of it um, but I do drink it, and I still drink and it. And it works I'm not for her. Lie. It works for her. And, but I don't, if I drink it, it's like this much, where I just get that bubbly, carbonated, whatever it is. And the reason I prefer Diet Pepsi is Diet Pe Pepsi has taken um, the bad sweetener out. Coke, yeah. Diet Coke has it in it still. So I'm an anti-Diet Coke, anti. Mm -hmm. um, the Pepsi took aspartame out of it and they're now sweetening it with Splenda right. and um, Stevia. Mm -hmm. So that's a healthier. It is, that's true. Uh, if you're gonna do it, right. Diet Pepsi would be the right. way to go but for a little you, bit, small. But, but let me tell you something even better is getting, you can get bottled Pellegrino water. Yeah. Mm -hmm and you can uh, slice up a lime and squeeze it in there and put the little squeeze lime in there and then put a little stevia, liquid stevia, not the granular stevia, mm -hmm. shake it up. Mm -hmm. Well, not too much, it'll explode, <laughs> okay? Just mix it up, <laughs> okay? And then you taste really good like a 7-Up or a, a limeade or something. Well, Mary, thank you for coming and telling us your story. And this is working for you. I'm not gonna ask you about how many pounds you've lost. It's melting. Her, her, <laughs> but, but let me tell you something. 
Her belly fat is shrunk. Her belly fat <laughs> is melting away. It is. Is it's that amazing. happy news? Is that good? Are you happy uh, about it? Oh, I am beyond happy. I've got clothes in my closet I haven't worn in seven years. Oh, that's so awesome. It's a, it's a new beginnings for me. So it's moving into the zone, and I love I'm that. In the zone. And you can get in the, the zone too. Zone. The keto zone. Uh, yeah, there is a bio, uh, there's a there's what called the zone. The right. keto zone is what we're talking about here. Described by Don in his new book, and it goes into great detail. Talks about all of the science behind this, but also the application to your life. You know how your life can be changed. How you can become that person God wants you to be. How you can rise up out of the the uh, the dull cauldron of, of of depression and and anxiety and being just tired. Just being tired. You say, I'm just tired. I know I say that myself. You know, why are we tired? Because we're not properly fueled and we're not properly energized. God wants us to be. So this book takes you into into the Kiesel zone, and the book will take you there. But we also give you a DVD. So your gift of $30 or more to this soul-winning ministry, taking the gospel of Jesus to as many people as we can, we're going to put these into your hands. Ship them to you as soon as possible. Get them right out to you so you can start doing it now. There's no reason to not start today. Why don't I, as soon as you get it, let's get started and become a new person. The new you, the, the woman or man that you have been created to be. That's really my goal for you, is you can be the best you possible. And then when you're the best you possible, then you can be available for God's assignment to do the work he's called you to do. And then when you put that in light of where we live and wh how we live in this age, this end day push of the gospel, he needs you and me to be strong to take the gospel out with great energy, great zeal, be salt and light. You can't do it from a sick bed. You can't do it. You got to live that life. Let it flow out of us. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This is how to get that living water flowing in your life. And when that happens, other people are touched. Lives are changed. Tomorrow on our program, we're going to actually talk about meals. Some practical meals that you can do to walk into the zone and stay in the keto zone. And when lives are changed, stories happen like this. Timing. It's one of the most important concepts that God continues to deliver upon for us. I was feeling down and depressed when God's impeccable timing intervened. You see, a few years ago, I received some concerning news from the doctor. One day, I was burdened so much by the devastating news that I had to pull off the road. I couldn't focus, and I was about to lose it. Then, all of a sudden, my phone began to ring. I didn't feel like answering it at first, but something told me I should. It turned out that it was one of the kind and caring prayer partners from Cornerstone. She called me to thank me for sending in my most recent gift and to ask me if I had any prayer requests. Right then and there, I immediately felt God's presence as I prayed with this wonderful prayer warrior. As a result of her praying with me, I received a miraculous healing. Praise God! And thank you, Cornerstone, for your incredibly uplifting prayer ministry. God used your ministry, along with his perfect timing, to heal me and to make my life new again. It's so awesome that Cornerstone has prayer lines open 365 days a year, 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, seven days a week, you know, for people to call in and pray and hear great miracles like that. So any of you at any time, call mm -hmm. in 888-665-4483 that we can pray. God is no respecter of person. What Just like praying. he did it for one, he'll do it for you as well. Well, you know, what was awesome about that testimony was that our mm -hmm. prayer partners called her. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and it was just at the right time yeah. then when she needed to hear an encouraging word from the Lord that our prayer partner prayed for them. So, you know, God is in the details, yes. Yes, you know? He, is. he really is. And guess what? He has your back. So know that whatever you're going through, mm -hmm. the Lord is with you. He never leaves you or forsakes you. Isn't that awesome about God? He's in the zone. In the zone. That's right. That's Speaking right. of... He's in your zone. He's yes. in all of our business right now talking about the keto zone yes. diet. 
it. Oh that's my right. goodness. Uh -huh. the, the lifestyle change that mm -hmm. really needs to be made. That's right. Well, we can talk about what happened yesterday, Jay. What did you say yesterday? Well, you know, I'm getting in the zone. He is I'm getting, getting into, into the it. zone. Mm -hmm. My wife since yesterday has gotten into the zone as well. And mm -hmm. you know what's amazing though? What I love mm -hmm. about this is I was looking at Mary. The last time I saw her was on our 9-11 campaign. Yeah. Yep. And she looks wonderful. I know, she told um, she us. said she dropped 20 pounds That's right. doing the keto right. zone. Mm -hmm. And ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. It is time for us to take care of ourselves, spirit, soul, and body. And that's what coaching is all about. It's not just about spiritual. Right. It's not just about the soul, but it's also right. taking care of the body as well. It's called right. the trichotomy mm -hmm. of man. Right. Man is a spirit, mm -hmm. possesses a soul, lives in a body. So we have to take care of this temple. Right. And I had, to, right. I had to repent. I have to repent. I haven't taken care of my body. I am the king of Popeyes. <laughs> I mean, I love fried chicken. I love gravy. Oh, oh, I get but it. But I yeah. want to live. Yeah, I want to live. Popeyes, the fast food. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fried chicken. Fast food chicken. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, sure. So I think this keto zone thing is amazing because I like what he talks about how the whole purpose of ketosis is to take from burning sugar, which mm -hmm. is what we eat a lot of, and change it over into carbs, yeah. or, or no, I'm sorry, no. not carbs, into fat, right. healthy fat, yeah. and we're learning how to burn fat mm -hmm. instead of sugar. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure ladies, I mean, I know, sugar. I was with Mary <laughs> in which, you know, I know I'm a fan of the sweets. I try not to be in bread. I really like bread a lot. Carbs. And so that mm -hmm. carbs and I guess, isn't that something that what we are attracted to the most a lot of times is what is the worst thing for us? Well, I you think know? we crave what we feed on. The, oh, <laughs> okay. Like that piece of banana nut bread I had this morning. I mean, you know, if I mm -hmm. feed on that too much, I'll just crave it and crave mm -hmm. it and want it. So, I mean, we've got to be careful. But we are a three-part being and, mm -hmm. and we've got to, that's why I like the real life coaching. That's why I like that we're bringing this in. We're not just dealing with things of the mind or the spirit, but also the body mm -hmm. so that we can be healthy and vibrant. And like she said, clarity of mind. Right. And she also said, I had an aha moment. Which, you know, us, we're watching ourselves on TV, you know, every day. It's like, I'm having a lot of aha I moments, know. you know? But we need to have an aha moment that's like, you know what? I, I need to maybe adjust this and not eat so much uh, spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> well, you know, and that's what hit me yesterday. I'm 40 years old, and I'm realizing I have two young boys. I have a three-year-old and a two-year-old, one about to be four. And I'm real, I want to be around and I want to be healthy when they get there. And if you don't take care of your body, mm -hmm. your body breaks and you die. Mm -hmm. we can, we'll go to heaven, but we'll just get there a lot earlier. And that's the reason why you need to get your hand on this here, a one hour DVD along with this book for your gift of $30 or more mm -hmm. to help you get into the zone. Mm -hmm. 2018 is the year we mm -hmm. are going to get into the zone. We're going to lose the weight we need to do. We're going to adjust our lifestyle. And you know what? He gives recipes mm -hmm. in here. There, and what I, what I really really appreciate about <laughs> this is what it shows us is that if we're eating a lot of sugar, what happens is that we burn that and then the good fat that we should be feasting off of mm -hmm. goes to our gut. Yeah. And as a result, that's how we keep yeah. putting on the weight because sugar is quicker and easier to burn. So your body has trained itself, store the good fat and burn up the sugar. Oh, well, what great. this does, it cuts all the sugar out mm -hmm. so then we can start mm -hmm. feasting mm -hmm. on the good fat and that's why we lose right. the weight. And what I love about it too, the decrease of appetite. Oh, right. wow. You know what's the worst, though, is when you go out with Christian or, you know, or your friends right. and they're like, I'm not eating this. I'm not. It's like nobody's eating anything. We're, we're in the Bible. Jesus was so passionate about the, the dinner table. And we're talking about mm -hmm. dinner conversations with, you know, right. Andrew and Mark. There's something that happens at a dinner table. And food is not a bad thing. Thing. No, it's, it's not. not something to be avoided. It's right. not something to, oh, I can't, you know, Jesus ate bread. Right. Jesus ate fish. G I mean, he drank wine. I mean, well, I don't know if he drank wine, but he turned water into wine. That's right. Have you heard the joke that said, well, how come Jesus can turn water into wine, but if I turn water into Sprite at a restaurant, it's stealing? Uh, okay, sorry, that was okay I got and, it now. You know, like <laughs> you ordered water and you went and got a Sprite. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I got it's it. It's a I bad know. joke. I got it. I need to take lessons from Mark Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, Jesus made... He, what about the Last Supper? Like, mm -hmm. think about how food is involved in so much of Jesus' life. And I think we should look food in a, in a different mindset. Well, and it's um, maybe, what is the saying that we don't eat to live, but we live, live. to eat? Is we that right? We don't live to eat. Eat, what we is, eat to live. Okay, yes. thank yeah. you. I got it backwards. Yeah. But you know, I want to encourage y'all. I am not 40 years old, so you, in case you're wondering, I'm a, I'm somewhat older, and um, this 
keto zone diet is for all ages. <laughs> It's That's not right. just That's for right. one age, it's not for men only, it's not for women only, it's for anybody who you really just want to get your body in sync yeah. and that's really what it's all about and you can give us a call at 888-665-4483 and you can find out how you can get your book, your DVD and most of all we have people there praying for you too because sometimes honestly this weight thing can be a struggle. Right. You know and sometimes you need somebody mm -hmm. to pray with you because there's temptation. Right. I'm with you. Sugar, diet drinks, mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff. That's a temptation but there is no temptation that is, what's right. the right scripture that's beyond what we that can he handle. Will, he'll make a way out. Right, and it could be that we just have to zip our lips and walk mm -hmm. away. Hey, it's just a piece of bread that we will only mm -hmm. taste for a minute, yeah. you know, and then it's gone. But um, I, I feel that, hey guys, we need to just get our bodies, which mm -hmm. is a temple. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. We need to take time to honor our bodies. Think about the, the people that are dealing with, and even personally, have it steals your joy when you're struggling with weight and mm -hmm. diet. It steals your peace. It's like it's almost can be like self-consuming. Mm -hmm. And I think this is like, hey, here's a way out, or here's a revelation, or here the light bulb can turn on, and you can have an aha moment, and here's how to do it. And maybe this will work for you. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, when they're dieting, I've never really been on an actual diet, diet, but what I hear is people say how you're dieting, but you're still hungry. You're still craving things. What's amazing that Mary mentions as well is that as you're on this and your body reaches ketosis, the hunger pangs decrease, which is, you don't hear that very often. You know, they'll say, well, you know, you eat a, if you're on Nutrisystem, eat a Nutri chip and have the Nutri chocolate spray or whatever it is that they got <laughs> that they give you to do. But you don't, when you're entering to right. ketosis, your body is constantly burning right. the healthy right. fat mm -hmm. and we don't, we're not craving the sugar. So you're not walking around every day wishing you could eat all these things. Right. But once again, that's the reason why you've got to get your hands on this. Yeah. Dr. Don Colbert is the doctor for Christian people. <laughs> He's all over the world. Put this into your library for your gift of $30, this one hour DVD, along with this book to give you practical principles mm -hmm. that not only can you lose weight, you can look great, you'll be able to maintain a healthy lifestyle and do it all under a Christian man with Christian yeah. faith, which I think Amen. is totally just phenomenal. Yeah. That's right, he is. He's been a blessing to Cornerstone and he's a blessing to really all of us throughout the world for his commitment to research, mm -hmm. for practicality and also God's word. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Foods that heal, his That's last right. book, you know, using food as a healing tool for your body also and take that with the with the supernatural and the spirit of God and man, you're, you can really transform your life That's if right. you'll listen to wise uh, doctors and teaching. And he's very, he gives really good steps, practical steps like yeah. weighing once a week and what to order at restaurants. So this is a great book to get. And it also talks to people with high blood pressure, talks about foods that you should and shouldn't eat. It deals with autoimmune disease. There's a lot of different things that you can adjust into your world. And you know, these are the practical steps, but we also have a God that answers spiritual prayer. Yes. And so that's what we like to do at the beginning of the show and we like to do this at the end of each show. And so we're gonna take a minute and at any time call in because we wanna pray for you and we believe that God will supernaturally heal you. So we're gonna take this time now and Pastor Amy, would you just pray us Absolutely. out today? Thank Father, you, we pray right now for our brothers and sisters. Father, I ask right now that you touch them, you yes, heal God. them. Father, if they need that aha moment to, yes. to change a diet or a, a plan, give them strategic ideas, Hallelujah. give them wisdom, grace, yes. healing, abundance, provision. Father, we just thank you right now that what thank concerns you. them concerns you. And that, Father, your heart is turned towards them, that you meet all of their needs. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.